Welcome back everybody, the History Guy here, and this is the first major battle of the legendary campaign on the Union side on Ultimate General Civil War. And uh, just up front, a couple of things real quick before we get into what's happening here. Number one, uh, if you did not see the first episode of this series, the link is in the description below. With that said, some of you are probably wondering where is Distress Call, which is normally the second battle. Uh, I have made a strategic decision to intentionally lose that battle. Now that's going to be controversial and certainly probably criticized by some of you, especially experienced players. And I get that and I acknowledge it. Uh, but I did the math and I explored this. And here's the thing. Number one, I was able to go into that battle with somewhere around 6,000 men, half of which I don't get until the second part of the battle. So in the early phases of that battle, I was going in with 3,000 completely inexperienced zero star troops and i found myself facing upwards of 10,000 two and three star confederate units uh, so first of all it was next to an impossible task to begin with now i did find a way to win it was not easy and i lost at least half my army doing it and as best i could tell from trying every which way i could being outnumbered better than two to one on the early phase and still two to one late in the battle against units that are much more experienced than me there was no way to do it without losing massive amounts of men which completely negated any benefit i got to winning that battle so just by simply retreating the second the battle started and not even fighting it i did take a hit to my reputation point so you can see i have a morale penalty right now so the morale is certainly going to be an issue in this battle but i bring in more money and more weapons than i otherwise would have had uh so or more people so i would have had a smaller army going into bull run uh just to try and win that battle so i made the decision that it was better to be able to take more men uh that I was able to use then go in with a really severely handicapped army where I'm already going to be significantly outnumbered. So with that said, we go into the first battle of Bull Run. All of my uh, infantry units that I have and I've maxed out everything I've got uh, are currently named after patrons. We still have a couple to go. Uh, there are currently six who are at the $5 a month and higher level. So therefore get to name units. I'm not going to talk about that at every battle, but I'm just mentioning that now. So you wonder why the names. So Wolverines, which was very difficult for me as an Ohio State fan, but I honor my pledge. Uh, Princess of Wales Royal Regiment is a new one that you'll see in this series. And that comes from our friend in England uh, who lives and uh, hails from Kent. And that is a regiment with history there. Uh, Carol's Marauders is named after another patron's stepmother who uh, very sadly passed away uh, just in the last week or so. And so it's to honor her and I'm glad to do that. Fight and Fins, I actually chose myself for one of our patrons who lives in Finland and didn't have a suggested name and said I could name it for him. So I thought that was a really cool name to have. And of course we have O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws who have been a long time part of my army. So with that said, we're going to dive into the battle first bull run. As near as I can tell, I'm going to, again, be heavily outnumbered. I think probably somewhere in the, in the realm of, uh, I would guess, eight, eight or 9,000 men. Uh, he's going to probably have somewhere around 25,000 men in this battle. I don't know for sure. I know I have 16,500 and 42 guns, and all of them pretty much inexperienced. So, uh, I will talk a little bit about the history of the battle. I'm not going to get into it real heavy, though. And the reason why is that last summer I actually went to the Bull Run Battlefield. My daughter and I were there for just a couple of hours, so I didn't have a lot of time. And I really only visited a few of the sites associated with the battle. But I will put a link in the description below so you can watch my visit. It's about 20 minutes long. Uh, it's a video of some of the highlights of my visit uh, to places like the Stone Bridge over Manassas Creek. Uh, I visited Matthews Hill over here and, of course, Henry Hill down here. So that talks a lot about that. So I won't go into it real heavy, but we've got some time while my units are getting into position that I can talk a little bit about this. So the first major land battle of the American Civil War, what everybody thought would be the only major land battle of the American Civil War, uh, was fought near Manassas Junction, about 25 miles south-southwest of the city of Washington, D.C., in northern Virginia. Uh, it was fought on a Sunday, much to the chagrin of a 
brigade commander in the Confederate Army by the name of Thomas Jackson, who hated fighting on Sunday, but yet found himself doing that regularly. Um, a lot of society from Washington came out to see what they thought would be the, the climactic battle of the war, the only major battle, uh, and of course got the surprise of their lives when the Union Army was routed and they had to bog down the road trying to get back to, to the city. Um, very, very green and experienced units on both sides. Both armies had been rushed into action without much training, without much of a chance to do much of anything. Uh, there were officers on both sides who had combat experience, particularly in the Mexican War, but uh, for the most part, the soldiers did not. A lot of confusion on the battlefield. Uh, each state had kind of equipped and uniformed their men, so you had Union units show up on the battlefield wearing gray uniforms. You had Confederate units wearing blue uniforms. A lot of their officers were still wearing their blue uniforms from having served in the Union Army. About 18,000 men actually engaged in combat, uh, in combat on each side. Um, it was the bloodiest battle in American history till that point. Of course, many of the battles of the American Civil War took that title. But uh, on the Union side, somewhere around 4,000 casualties. I think about 500 actually killed. Uh, the rest wounded or missing. Might have been 3,000. I'm doing a th this from memory. About 2,700 on the Confederate side, about 400 killed. There were two distinct Confederate armies that were here, one that was already on the field, the other one who arrived by rail at Manassas Junction and rushed into combat, and that'll be the army that I face in the Confederate counterattack late in this battle, and that is probably the part I'm worried about the most. Uh, I'm going to sit here and kind of, yeah, you see, there we go. Three-star Confederate unit for South Carolina. How on earth they have three stars of experience when this is their first combat, I will never know. But that's the reality we face with um, with fighting the, uh, the legendary mode. So uh, we're going to sit tight until we get some of the reinforcements. Uh, Sherman and I think there's another brigade that will come down, maybe Keys, from up here. And then we will rush them across the creek to... Uh, to hit him here, but the main attack is going to come from down here, which is what historically happened. There was a Union feint uh, on the east side of the battlefield, but the main attack came down from the north, the main body of troops, and hit Matthews Hill, and then came down into this valley and back up the hill to hit uh, Henry Hill. So hopefully we can pretty much wipe out Clay's Dragoons here, because they're going to cause problems for me. Otherwise, they're going to be roaming around the battlefield the whole time. Oh, yes. Wiped them out. Love it, love it, love it. So these guys are going to probably eventually need supplies. And I'll have supplies coming. So uh, I'll have to send some of those over there. All right. So here we go. We have our first troops. Now, these are all my troops. Uh, so I actually do not want them to lead this attack. I'm going to allow the troops that come in after to lead the attack. So we'll get them into position and then kind of sit them tight for a while. Now, interesting thing about this battle, uh, the names of the armies. The uh, You see over here, AONV, because the Union Army that fought in this battle under command of uh, General Irvin McDowell uh, was called the Army of Northeastern Virginia. Uh, occasionally also I've seen it referred to as the Army of Northern Virginia, which of course was the famous name given to the Confederate Army that operated in Virginia under Robert E. Lee a year later. Uh, the Confederate Army, one of them, was the Army of the Potomac, which of course became the name of the Union Army. So, so many things were confusing and kind of backwards in this battle. There was a lot of friendly fire because of the colors of the units, because of the confusion, because of the inexperience of the soldiers. A lot of the men who eventually became prominent names in the, both armies got their start here. Uh, you had folks like Ewell on the Confederate side and, and of course Stonewall Jackson who were brigade commanders here. Uh, General Sherman was a brigade commander in the Union Army as was Oliver Howard uh, and many others as well. So we're getting these guys into position. And then we're going to kind of sit tight. So uh, I'll go ahead and drop out for now. And then we'll come back once we're ready to actually engage in combat. All right. So with 47 minutes to go in this first phase, the tricky part of this, and here comes keys. So now I'll be able to begin my assault on this side. The tricky part of this is that on one hand, I want to 
advance cautiously and kind of use terrain and numbers to my advantage where I can by trying to overwhelm numbers all at once before he has a chance to bring his full force to bear. But on the other hand, the timer that it puts on you in order to take the objective before it declares the battle a draw really severely limits my ability to do that and it forces me to rush Henry Hill before I'm really ready to do that. So unfortunately, even though I'm outnumbered and certainly out experienced, I have to push. So that's kind of where we're at. So as soon as Keys gets down here and I'm ready to assault across here, I'll go ahead and start really pushing in earnest on this side. But I want to try, he's only got three brigades here, so I'm going to try to hit him with everybody at once. I'm hoping maybe to even overrun these batteries before he gets a chance to uh, pull them back and use them. All right, we're losing some men here and there, but I still want to wait a little while. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and push here. shift this way a little bit to make some more room. Alright, I'm going to use numbers to our advantage here. He's only got three brigades, but he does have a lot of men. Alright, I'm going to break off these skirmishers. Try to get out on his flank here and do the same on this side. See, now Hampton's Legion has himself a problem, and he doesn't know what to do. So he's he's turning from one side to the other because he doesn't know how to handle this. All right, meanwhile, we're ready to make our advance here with Sherman and Keys. I'm going to hit Hampton, if I can, real quick. Because one way to neutralize his advantage, if I can get lucky, is to uh, is to hit them with melee combat. You can see Ohio Outlaws just got completely pummeled by a volley there. And that's what I want to avoid moving forward. The one thing that these 1842s have going for them is that they're pretty decent for melee combat. We gotta hit these batteries. Oh my gosh, they just kinda like stopped. They stopped just short of actually hitting him. That's kinda ridiculous. I'm not entirely sure why that happened. All right, come on, hit these batteries, overrun them, melee. What are we doing here? Run, 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 just get. All right, in the meantime, we gotta try and push through here. Looks like Sherman got driven back. I'm gonna send these scouts in too. No, don't let the batteries get away. Oh well, we'll uh, we'll destroy them soon enough after this. We've gotta keep moving. I can't believe we still haven't pushed this guy out. There he goes. All right, so now what I can actually do is I'm going to go ahead and send those scouts. All right, I guess now that we took Matthews Hill, we automatically advance to the next phase. Okay. So it looks like Hampton's Legion is making its way over here. I just want to get those scouts clear. 
I want to get all of these guys across now. And then eventually bring the guns over as well. B's going to try and make a stand right here in these woods. There we go. We wiped out one of the batteries at least. Now, one thing I want to do. Now, typically what I will do, let me pause for a second, in this battle is that I would try to envelop him from one side and the other and leave him stuck right here in the middle and just squeeze him into non-existence. I can't do that here because I know I'm outnumbered and definitely he's got better trained troops. So I've got to be much more cautious and much more deliberate. So I'm actually going to fuse the two halves of my army here in the center and actually push straight through the center and keep a real tight perimeter right here. Get my guns right in there and try to use those smooth bores and just unleash lead on his counterattacks that I know will come. He's going to have way more men than me, so I've got to neutralize that advantage the only way I can, which I think is with my artillery. So we'll push through. And of course, I, I've pretty much got to be in that position, uh, at least right here at Henry Hill, by the time this timer ticks down on these two hours, which means I have to keep moving pretty quickly. I'm going to hit B with everything I've got here. I want to try and nail him as best I can. Oh my gosh. These darn skirmishers. And then, of course, here comes Hampton's Legion. Actually, we're going to send, send Sherman over this way. I'll send these two units down this way. Eventually, I want to get these supplies over to these guns on this side. Where did Hampton go? There he is. All right, let's sit tight right here. He's going to move. Okay. All right, I got to be careful. I don't know where Stuart's cavalry is exactly, but I've got to be cautious of it. Let me bring these scouts back just to at least be a little bit of protection for these guns. All right, there's Stuart's cavalry there. All right, Stonewall Jackson's brigade has arrived. Of course, he's not called Stonewall yet, and we're not going to let him earn that today. Uh, that one's broken up into five regiments, uh, the five regiments that made up that brigade. Uh, and so we'll see where he stations them. He may send them up here. In fact, yep. No, that's the South Carolina unit there. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to push down, drive these skirmishers off, hopefully take out this battery, and then the Louisiana Tigers are going to be sitting right there, and I'm sure they're going to be a three-star unit too. So... Uh, we'll get them into position, and we'll see what we can do here. I think Francis Bartow was uh, killed or at least mortally wounded at this battle, if I remember. He may have been one of the ones, I think I visited a monument on the battlefield that marked the place where he was mortally wounded up on top of Henry Hill. As was Bernard B., who was the one who gave Stonewall Jackson the name. Stonewall. Okay, we're going to move the guns again. Got to be careful here. Okay. Holy cow. Here comes the Stonewall Brigade. <laughs> all three stars, all rushing right across the river. So we've got to back up. We're going to let him come to us. Hold tight, Wilcox. I'm going to bring these dun guns down here and let them be ready. Alexander McCook was killed. He's actually a Northeast Ohio guy. I've uh, visited where he is from. It's actually not far from here, where I live. Carrollton, Ohio is the name of the town where the McCooks lived. A number of them became prominent members of the, uh, the Union Army. All right, so he rushed across and then kind of stopped, it looks like. I'm going to back the Ohio Outlaws up. Let's get Carol's Marauders up. Let's move the Prince of Wales Regiment down. Princess, I keep calling it Prince. Princess of Wales. I will get it right.
All right, yes, please come across at me. Of course, that does delay my ability to get to where I want to go, but it allows me to inflict casualties when he does this charge one unit at a time thing at me. Carol's Marauder's going to get lit up a little bit here. It's not their fault. They're a very green unit going against a three-star elite unit. But our guns are going to make him pay for that big time. Here comes Bartow again. All right, we just drove off Hampton's Legion, so that helps. That allows me to, to push forward over here. Because I need to start getting closer so I can consolidate the two halves of my army. All right, real quick, I just want to take a moment and evaluate the situation. I've got an hour and 16 minutes to get across this river, so it's going to be tough. I know I'm still outnumbered. Let's just see how things are going. Uh, Wilcox has had a rough day, uh, twice as many deaths as kills. Fighting Finn's doing well, despite having lost their commander to a wound. Franklin's doing well. Carol's Marauders very well. Um, Wolverine's doing great. Princess of Wales Regiment doing very, very well. Uh, so... Uh, Ohio Outlaws as well. So we're inflicting a lot more casualties than we're taking. Howard being the lone exception to that, but that's not one of my units. Uh, so, so far good news, I think, on the casualty front. We're evening the odds. Um, Sherman and Keys, not so much. So over here on this side, not doing quite as well. But none of these are my units. But I figure he's got me by a good 50%, you know, so I've got 16,000, he's probably got 24. So that means I need, I think, to to really have a good chance here. I want to be inflicting at least 50% more casualties than I'm taking to be able to even those odds. Be careful of the Wolverines here, I'm gonna pull them back. Princess of Wales Regiment, we gotta move. All right, let's sit tight here. This is going to be tough. Fighting Fins are going to take some shots here. See, I wish I could just sit tight. It's only 11.21 in the morning. There's no reason for me to have to rush this attack. But the game mechanics force me to rush the attack. Alright, i got to get up here and deal with this battery. I can't let them sit there and just take their pot shots at me. Hampton's Legion is going to come again. So I want to be able to get Sherman over here and hit the Fort South Carolina. But I've got to be cautious of where Hampton is. Alright, we got to get supplies over there. I think it's probably safe to do that now. There we go. Now here's an opportunity. If I could catch some of these guys while they're trying to cross that river. Really, it's a stream. It's a, it's a significant stream, though. You'll see in the video that I made, if you check that out down in the link, um, you'll see what Bull Run Creek looks like. It was a very sweltering, crazy humid day, the day that my daughter and I were there. But uh, it, was, it was a nice visit to the battlefield. All right, here comes Hampton again. We drove off the Lynchburg uh, artillery, drove off the Louisiana Tigers. So let's get these guns up here on top of the hill now. Ideally, I've got to get them over here. Got to keep pushing, keep pushing. Everybody's exhausted at this point. But this is where I like to... I, I want to be able to really catch them. It's down here in the river. Be careful Franklin doesn't get hit.
Kill General Beauregard. Beauregard and Johnston were the commanders of the two Confederate armies that were here. Of course, Beauregard had been the uh, the commander of the Confederate forces that fired on Fort Sumter. All right, there goes General B. All right, once again, I want to evaluate how I'm doing in terms of the numbers here. So uh, bear with me as I do that. We've got, okay, Wilcox has killed more than he's lost now, so that's an advantage. Fighting Finns, man, they're taking it to them. They lost their commander, and it's already poor morale in my army. Uh, so just for them to survive is good when they lose their commander. Wolverine's doing well. Franklin, uh, not one of my units, but also doing well. Carol's Marauder's doing very, very well. Princess of Wales Royal Regiment, excellent. They lost their commander, killed in action, but they have 915 kills to only 352 deaths. I've got to be careful with any of these units that lost their commander. Morale is going to be a big issue for this battle, for me. And then on this side, we're starting to even these odds out now, so that's good. Uh, but most importantly is going to be my artillery, and I've got to get him up on this hill. Uh, in time to face his counterattack that's going to come. So I'm going to have to push, push, push here. Let's get that second Virginia driven off. Shouldn't take much. Alright, Sherman, you hang tight right there. We're going to eliminate this three-star unit, hopefully. Alright, here comes a, a fresh unit, three stars, a thousand men. Haven't seen him to this point. There goes the second Virginia. All right, we got to take it to Hampton here. Got to be careful. Sherman's in a precarious position there with all of these three-star units sitting right there. Let's get across the river. Okay, supplies are here. You know what? Just for now, we're going to turn these guns on that Lynchburg artillery. All right, we eliminated the 4th of South Carolina. 26 minutes. Got to get moving. Got to get moving. I need Hampton to fall back. comes B again. Oh man, I don't like how I'm cutting this close. I just need a little more time. I like how the battle's going. I don't like that I'm short on time to be able to win it. I'm going to back Sherman up a little bit. See, I'm in a good place where anytime he tries to launch one of these melee attacks, I've got a unit to receive the attack, but also one to fire into their flank as they receive the attack. So that works out nicely. This is why I've got to take out this battery, because he's getting flank attacks on me. I don't know where the Louisiana Tigers are, but if they're not able to support, to s protect these guys, even if I lose these scouts, it might be worth it for me to send the scouts across to wipe that battery out as I move in here so they're not firing into my rear. All right, we've only got 13 minutes left. We gotta push these guys out of these woods. Even if it means casualties. All right, I don't see the Louisiana Tigers. So we're gonna be able to get at least, get across this bridge and hit this battery. So we'll sacrifice those scouts to take these guys out. Oh yeah, we just wiped out that Virginia regiment. All right, we gotta push Bartow out of the woods. Let me get up here. I might be able to wipe out the 27th Virginia if I press. Six minutes left. I've gotta get moving. I am not where I wanna be. Fire. 
Hit him. Just gotta get him. Alright, we're gonna be near the position I want to be at. There's the Louisiana Tigers. They retreated from here and went up to up here instead. Wasn't expecting that. Alright. Alright, this is going to be super close because his counterattack is going to come just as I get up down. Now, here's the problem. You can see here, 50-minute timer. I have to be holding this objective all the way down here before that timer hits zero or it ends in a draw. So, at the very least, I've got to be able to touch the uh, take control of it long enough to reset that timer so we'll see what happens here all right here we go and we've got to push got to push quickly my poor guys are going to be exhausted but this is this is the part i'm concerned about everything so far has gone pretty much according to the plan that i had when i started this fight What I don't want to do is advance too far on this side and get myself in trouble. going to continually kind of be issuing orders here to make sure my guys are going the way I want them to and I don't get overextended or otherwise kind of messed up here. Here comes Stuart. See, I was afraid he might do that, which is exactly why I left these scouts back here. I'm going to have to redirect the second Ohio. These guys fire at me. I'm going to be in trouble. pull out there all right here comes the uh, here comes the counterattack so this is not not gonna be as easy as I thought because I'm not anywhere close and now he's gonna be rushing in probably another eight nine thousand men into this spot A couple of these units, I think, are going to get wiped out here. See, it's really just ideal as far as what I wanted to do with this battle. All except that timer. I can't stress that enough. It really messes the whole plan up. I've only got 27 minutes to take this objective and here come big big brigades I've got to push forward with everything I have I love the random, kill them all, that you hear yelled by your men. Nineteen minutes. Man, I just, if I had another half hour even, I think that would be enough to get this done a little easier. But so far, they're back far enough that I might be able to push forward, hit that objective, and reset this timer. Ah, Colonel Sherman just got wounded. Alright, I'm going to stop everybody now, because I think I'm close enough so we can fire a couple of volleys. This is where most of the casualties are going to happen in this battle, though. Alright, let's get these batteries firing quickly. 12 minutes. Of course, then once I take it, I've got to hold it for two hours. But I think that's that's going to be easier. All right, Sherman. That's not one of my units anyway, so we're going to push him forward. 
Oh, flanked. Okay. Hampton. Eight minutes. All I gotta do is take it long enough to reset that timer. And if we can light up Bonham here for a minute, we can do that. Sherman's gonna just get nailed, though. Let's get these guys in a little closer here. Five minutes. I gotta push. All right, Bonham, we're coming. This is a, d a daring attack. Frontal assault by the Princess of Wales Regiment and by Sherman. But it's what I've got to do to reset this timer. And it worked. It drove Bonham right off. And that's going to reset this timer. It's two minutes. It's at two minutes. Yes, there we have it. All right, now we stop. Now everybody holds. And we let the artillery do the work. We're going to move them even closer. I'm going to get this artillery just up as close as I can. All right, 2nd Virginia with 195 men giving me fits right now. It's all right, Princess of Wales Regiment. You guys did the job. You got it done. You did what you needed to do. Oh, my gosh, this, this artillery. We got to take him out. All right, Sherman's going to get driven off here, I think. Actually, my whole left side's in danger. We're going to send Carol's Marauders over that way. I got to shore up my left. My right's okay. There goes Sherman. All right, we'll send Carol's Marauders in here. We'll get the Ohio Outlaws over there. All right, we got to nail these guys. We got to hit Holmes hard. He's going to take the objective back, but that's not an issue because I reset the timer and it goes back to 50 again. So I'm fine. I bought, I bought an extra 50 minutes by taking it even for a moment. All right, fighting fins. Let's get you over here. Okay, I had a little bit of danger there for a minute, but I think it's we've kind of settled in now. That battery, the battery's got a little too close because my men fell back just as I was moving them up, so that kind of messed me up a little bit. But it's not a huge deal. I think we're solid. Now he's going to counterattack, especially over on this side. So I've got to be careful. I'm going to send some additional units over to this side to back these guys up. Hopefully the artillery can do the job. Carol's and Marauders, look at you go, man. 1,200 kills, but also 656 deaths. So I've got to be cautious. I'm going to move this battery up. Fighting fins are taking it now, too. See, this is the problem. you got massive brigades. Let's bring Woods over this way. Look at this guy. Louisiana Tigers, man. It's alright. We're sending help to this side. Hour and 42 to go. The longer this goes, hopefully the more I inflict casualties. Man, I don't like this though. I don't like how heavily engaged Carol's Marauders has to be here to hold the, hold the center of the line. I need Howard to help him out. See, he's, he's going for this side now. Here we go. It's making a dash for my artillery.
All right. Starting to get a little breathing room now. Losing a lot of commanders, though. Which, that did happen, especially on the Confederate side. The Confederates lost a number of brigade commanders in this, in this battle. Alright, 33rd Virginia, that's one of the remnants of the Stonewall Brigade. Not that they ever received that name because <laughs> they didn't stand like a stone wall here. Most of the brigade's been destroyed. 5th Virginia is still alive. 33rd's very close to being gone completely. Alright, we gotta be careful here. This is a big regiment coming in. The batteries are gonna light him up though. Oh yeah! Thanks for playing, Smith. Get out of here. Ohio Outlaws took the brunt of that one like a champ. Alright, Sherman, you gotta turn. What is he doing? He's marching up here now. I don't know what he thinks to gain by that. Alright, now we got another three star unit that's still got a thousand men. Alright, fighting Finns. Morale's kind of an issue for them at this point. Man, this is so much worse than the real battle as far as the casualties. Every one of my units is getting hit pretty hard. But that's what happens when you're outnumbered and out experienced by quite a bit. Second Ohio will get wiped out at some point, but at least they'll hold. There's Yule, there's B. He's gonna he's gonna load up for at least one more assault on this center position here. I think that's what he's considering here. Carol's Marauders, fifteen hundred kills, nine hundred losses. Uh, I'm actually gonna pull them out and get Franklin up there on the line. Franklin's not one of my units. I can afford to lose his a little more. I'm going to try to get the fighting fins on, on his flank over here. Alright, here comes the assault that I knew was going to happen. He's also trying to attack across the river here. Oh, we don't need you to back up that much, guys. Actually, I'm going to keep keys right here for now. Sherman, you got to stay facing this way, buddy. All right. Need one more gallant stand. Fifty minutes still, my goodness. This is such first the battle seems to go too fast because I don't feel like I have enough time. Now I just can't wait for the time to end. Cause he keeps hurling these huge units at me. Used up all those supplies because this has been a long fight. All right, here comes Philip St. George Cock again. I believe he was Jeb Stewart's father in law, if I remember correctly. Now, actually, no, I think that's 
he was a Union general named uh, Philip St. George Cock. I think there was a cock on both sides. Come on, let's wipe out Hampton's Legion. Whew, 33rd Virginia is going to get wiped out too. One or two more volleys from the Ohio Outlaws should finish them off. Man, look at those numbers. 1,345 kills, 669 deaths. Major, major fighting. Okay, they're gone. Ohio Outlaws just wiped out one of the Stonewall Brigade units. There we go. All right. We're in the tail end of this thing now. Fighting Finns, you have no reason to advance that far. You can go ahead and back up. Twenty minutes. I think at this point he realizes he doesn't have the manpower to reoccupy the position. Couldn't have done that without the artillery, that's for sure. Alright, here comes one last dance. He's going to come at me. With everything he's got back here, he's going to hit Keys, which is not one of my units, so have at it. Here comes B. He's going to cease to exist. Yep. Woo! Wow. What a bloody battle. If that's any indication of how this series is going to go uh, on this level, man, it's going to be crazy. Legendary mode is going to be super intense. Okay, so there you have it. I did have, uh, including the men manning my artillery, about 16,000 men. Looks like he had about 25, 26,000. Um, I lost 8,300, 8,500 or so when you add everything up. Inflicted about 16,000 casualties. So almost two to one when I'm outnumbered by that much. That's a good day. These are three-star units. He outnumbered me significantly, and I still inflicted massive casualties. Took out almost two-thirds of his army. You know what? Honestly, that's a good day. I'm sure you guys can find some things I could have done better, and I'm all ears. I always welcome constructive criticism, criticism that's going to make me better. But I feel like that went about as well as it could have. Uh, obviously, the morale hit that I took was a big issue there. But I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to refit. Uh, because I want to take some time to kind of explore my options with career points and decide how I want to do that a little bit. But uh, we've got a couple of big ones coming up. River Crossing and Logan's Crossroads and then into Shiloh, which is going to be our first really massive battle. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up right there. Like I said before, check out that link in the description if you want to see my visit to the first Bull Run Battlefield. Let me know what you think I could have done better or what you liked about it. Uh, use the comment section below for any and all of those things. Please hit that thumbs up if you like this series and you want to see more. And we will see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.